<laughs> Tremble with wonder at the magnificence of my sorcery! Unbelievable! It's simple tea, but somehow it's shining with the colors of the rainbow. And the colors changing as it's being poured. How magical. Of course it's magical. I achieved it through magic. It's a spell of my own design, in fact. Impressed? Is this what you wish to show me? I must admit, I've never seen such a thing. Is it still potable? Is it still potable, she asks. Then I suppose you wouldn't mind taking the first sip. That was amusing, Constance, but out with it. What was that favor you wished to ask of me? It's a small thing regarding my house. I thought your highness might bend some slight effort towards seeing it restored from nothing. I had a feeling that was it. I wish I could help, but you must understand my present circumstances. Yes, yes, I'm aware. All the more reason for you to get in on the ground floor, as it were. My magical might is unrivaled, as I proved to you only moments ago. Surely you can see the obvious benefit in having the sorceress prodigy Constance at your beck and call. I agree that you are remarkable. That is beyond question. But how do you imagine Rainbow Tea will help me to achieve my aim? Uh, well, I... Uh... Just imagine the acclaim it will bring you at tea parties! It's a most worthy party trick, yes. But I have no use for such a thing. Well, well, it's not as if that's the only trick up my sleeve. That was merely a sample of my repertoire. I never cease my work in developing new magic. Your Highness is sure to find some of it useful. Constance, there's something important that I would like to talk with you about. Oh, have we not been discussing weighty matters all this time? It's regarding a truth that you and countless generations of House Nouvelle have occulted. Ah, that. If you ever feel like revealing all to me, I'd be happy to talk further. Until then, my apologies, but as the Imperial Princess, there's nothing I can do to help your cause. Of course. And now I shall make myself scarce. Good day. You've got a look of resolve on your face, Constance. Have you come to a decision? Quite so. I never waver for long, you know. I can read the signs as well as anyone. Things are in flux. I mustn't remain shackled by the past. I am ready to enlighten you regarding the secret that House Nouvelle has kept for generations. You have my gratitude. You will be rewarded for taking such a drastic measure. To be clear, this is about your crest, correct? Your instincts are sharp. According to the Empire's records, I bear the major crest of Macule. But those records are mistaken. In point of fact, the crest that I bear is... The major crest of Noah, one of the lost saints. That bloodline was believed to have died out. No one, not even the Imperial nobility, bears that crest. How then did you come by that bloodline? And how did you manage to thwart the Empire's investigations into the matter? All of the answers you seek are tied to House Nouvelle's origins. Close to a thousand years ago, Saint Noah parted ways with Saint Seros. She lived out her days in seclusion on what would become Nouvelle territory. Her children obscured their origins before serving the Empire. It wasn't long before they were ennobled. I suspect Saint Noah feared that revealing her crest would only lead to tragedy. So she passed it off as the crest of Macule, which already existed within the Empire. Yes, much like Saint Macule, Saint Noah was known to be a masterful mage. Her magic ensured that any test would not reveal the true nature of her crest, Otherwise, someone may have exploited our bloodline long ago. Hmm. House Nouvelle was known for producing as few heirs as possible. It was also known for keeping its offspring pure, mostly by disallowing marriage with other houses. All of that effort was in order to conceal Noah's bloodline, wasn't it? Yes, but it was a factor in our house's ultimate downfall. Our priorities were, perhaps, not what they ought to have been. In sidestepping the internal strife within the Empire, we left ourselves open to the external threat posed by Dagda. 
With stronger blood ties to other houses, we might have had allies in our time of greatest need. Interesting. I always had the inkling that the six noble houses were eager to see House Nouvelle fall. Thank you for trusting me with this, Constance. I swear that once I ascend the throne, I will do all I can to help you revive your fallen house. <laughs> your Majesty, might I have a moment of your time? Yes, of course. Unless... you're not planning yet another magical exhibition, are you? Knowing you, it seems a safe bet. I can't imagine what else it could be. I already promised to help you revive House Nouvelle. If our campaign continues as it has, we'll soon prevail. There's no need to keep inventing spells. I don't doubt that your majesty has things well in hand when it comes to the war. Yet why should I allow that to deter me from achieving my ultimate satisfaction? As the scion of Proud House Nouvelle, I shall bring about my grand achievement before my house is restored. On that, you may rely. You have a strong will and a strong mind. You do not consider yourself above concerted effort, either. Even during wartime, you trust your own ability to fight and survive. You're ever focused on the future and on the actions necessary to realize it. Where is this coming from? If there's an angle to be played with this praise, it eludes me. <laughs> I was only speaking the truth. I find your efforts to be admirable. Hmm, your words are sweet. And yet... Yes? Please, go on. Forgive me, Your Majesty, but you promised that House Nouvelle would be restored. Yet you work toward a future with no place for the noble houses of old. Granted, in your unified Fodlin, the acting lord for each territory will come from noble stock. But in the long term, your system will replace the nobility. Our role will change significantly. That's exactly right. There will no longer be lords who inherently rule over a particular territory. Instead, nobles will act as government officials, working for the people in exchange for a salary. Officials will be selected from the general populace as well, bringing an end to the very concept of social standing. All will rise and fall by their own merits. And it is for those reasons that I continue my magical research. Even if nobility ceases to exist as a concept, the meritorious spellcraft displayed by House Nouvelle shall make us a household name. Hmm, I must admit your words strike a chord. I find myself oddly moved by your proclamation. So you see, Your Majesty, the fortunes of my house dovetail nicely with your plans. The road on which you stride courageously forward leads to my own bright future. I too believe that the future you wish for can be found at the end of this path we're cutting. Splendid! Oh, amid all this talk, I neglected to present my demonstration. Sit back as I, Constance Von Nouvelle, display the never-duplicated Nouvelle style of spellcraft. Uh, about that. Another time, yes? I have much to do elsewhere. No, wait! There's no time like the present! Why, it shan't take more than an hour or two. <laughs> Am I in bed dreaming, or is that you, Mercedes? How serendipitous it is to see you again! Yes, and here we are! You were so small when I saw you last. How you've grown! I cannot express how worried I was to hear that you had left House Bartels. I was turned away any time I asked about you, and of course Emile would never tell me anything. I'm sorry. There was so much going on in House Bartels back then. But enough about all that. How are you, Constance? I hear you've had hardships of your own. Indeed. House Nouvelle is no more, and I went alone to the School of Sorcery. Oh! You went to the Royal School of Sorcery? Just before I began at the Officer's Academy, I was studying there as well. You were? It must have been after my graduation in 1177. That was the year I enrolled. We probably just missed each other. No! You mean to say that if I had stayed a trifle longer, we could have been reunited sooner? It seems so. 
Ah, <laughs> oh, dear Constance. When we were little, I thought of you as my little sister. But now that you've grown up, I think our roles might be reversed. I'll be looking up to you now, and maybe even asking for your help sometimes. You'd ask for my help? <laughs> I never thought I'd see the day. And yet you're seeing it. You know, I had another friend at the school. Her name is Annie. Why don't we all have some tea together? I'm sure you two would really hit it off. You must meet Annette. Yes, I would welcome the chance to have a long chat with her. I'll prepare the tea straight away. Oh, no need to rush. The tea isn't going anywhere. Don't be ridiculous. Time is always of the essence. Why put off for later what I... I... could. Constance? I wonder what's the matter? Did something happen? Mercedes, sharing your precious time with me is perhaps more than I deserve. What do you mean? Why sit with me when you could share your tea time with someone else? I shall instead stand and serve the tea, though if my presence still proves to be a burden... Goodness, of course it isn't! Are you feeling all right? My feelings are immaterial. Pardon me while I fetch the tea leaves at once. Until a moment ago, everything seemed all right. Why did she change so suddenly? I'll have to ask her what's going on. I see. The sunlight brings back painful memories in you. I'm afraid so. Please forgive my behavior from before. I cannot abide these indiscretions of mine. That's all right. The way you always work so hard day and night, it's no wonder it's had this effect on you. You work harder than anyone I know. I've always been impressed by that, Constance. That means a lot to me. You know, at the School of Sorcery there was a professor who specialized in magical cures. Why not write her a letter? Perhaps she can suggest a treatment that might help. I have tried. She could do nothing for me. But I vowed then to the goddess that I would find a way to overcome my trials. I will prove my skills to the goddess and everyone else, bringing me closer to restoring Hell's Nouvelle. <laughs> You're a tough cookie, Constance. Naturally, and with your support, I shall grow ever stronger by the day. I know you will. You know, during the years of political turmoil, House Martreats was destroyed just as your house was. But restoring my father's house has hardly crossed my mind. I guess I'm not as tenacious as you are. You needn't be so hard on yourself, Mercedes. You have had other priorities since then. Oh, oh I've just had a grand idea. What is it? You ought to try to reinstate House Martreats. Oh dear. I'm not sure that's possible. Nonsense! If I can restore my own house, then you can restore yours. As we work to further our own life goals, we shall learn so much that we can share with one another. You make it sound so simple. How would I even go about that? That is simplicity itself. You shall become a prodigy at Spellcraft, as I am. Um, all right. I shall master the black arts, and you shall master the white. The world will know us as sister sages. I see. Our names shall ring out across Fodlin, earning us the titles we rightly deserve. I hope you won't mind me saying so, but this plan seems to have gotten a bit far-fetched. Oh no! Not if you join me, Mercedes! Where one may fail, together we are bound to succeed! She has such big plans, perhaps too big. In that way, at least, she's exactly the same as when she was little. Oh, what's the use? Even with all I've learned, I still don't understand. Hello, Constance. I hope I'm not interrupting. Not at all. I was just in need of a sympathetic ear. I found a magical scroll, 
which, unless I am mistaken, should relieve me of my woes. Oh, wonderful! Not so fast. The magic within this scroll is a type I have neglected to study. It pains me to admit this, but it may take decades of going back to the basics to grasp it. Decades? That's a long time to spend with your nose buried in an old piece of parchment. Why must the goddess dangle a solution before me, only to cruelly pull it away? There's no need to despair. To tell the truth, I like you just as you are. You do? Why? Those low moods of mine have never done anyone the least bit of good. You're like a little sister to me. Nothing you do will change that, not even a little bit. Really? Of course, you're my sweet Constance, and I like you just as you are. I... I see. Perhaps my moods are not the great burden I thought they were. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to pressure you. No matter what decision you make, I support you. I felt no pressure, I assure you. It's more that I feel embarrassed to have been embarrassed. I put so much effort into finding a magical means to alleviate myself that it never occurred to me that maybe all I needed was to accept myself. What will you do with the scroll you found? Oh, I'll continue to research it, for research's sake if nothing else, but I may have no need of it. It's not as if these moods of mine have ever hampered my efforts to restore my house. And I am as a sister to you, no matter which face I present, yes? Nothing, no mood, no foe, no obligation, will keep me from honoring my sisterly duty to protect you. <laughs> we can protect each other. Good, it is settled. Now we can begin the hard work of reclaiming our titles. Absolutely. We'll become sister sages and restore our houses to their former glory. You understand the plan perfectly. If we walk this path together, it can only end in triumph. Well, well, look who it is. Emil, it is you, isn't it? Are you feeling more talkative than when I saw you last? Do not call me that. <laughs> Oh, look at you. From professor at the Officer's Academy to an Imperial General. Though you seem idle enough now, might you spare a moment for a proper apology? Could you not have even informed me when dear Mercedes left House Bartels? To say nothing of the scandal you caused. Granted, I can hardly blame you, that family being what it was. But did it never occur to you that I ought to have been consulted? We've only known each other since childhood. Such callousness, such rank insensitivity. Emil, are you listening? You think you can escape? <laughs> I won't be denied this time. You may think yourself skilled with a blade, but remember that my spell work is peerless. Dealing with you would be no more than a murmured word and a flick of a finger. <sighs> restrain yourself, Constance. Oh, I am the model of restraint. On the contrary, Emil, it is you who insists on being so... I said not to call me that. You know I've not slipped from using General Yuritsa in public. And this is the thanks I get. <sighs> You've always been the sort to keep your own counsel and let others draw their own conclusions. Would it kill you to be silent for once? Emil, stop! This isn't over! Hey. <laughs> Did you send for me, Emil? Stop gossiping about me. Gossiping? About you? Oh, you wound me, Emil. So what if your name falls from my lips now and then? If you speak of my past, there will be consequences. I am aware. I have been silent regarding you secretly being of House Bartels. 
No, when I speak of you, I bandy gentler truths, such as your fondness for kittens and ice cream. All the silly little details that make you seem human. Those details are nobody's business but mine. Oh, Emil, do you have any notion what the rank and file say about you? No. They use words like unapproachable, menacing, and inscrutable. Regardless of your skill with the blade, fighting a war as if it were a long series of duels will end in death. And that is why I do what I can to ingratiate you with the soldiers you lead. No thanks necessary. I see you are still unhappy with me. <laughs> Whatever do you mean? The battlefield is solitary in the end. I have no interest in camaraderie with soldiers. Are you implying that in combat, you are an utterly matchless warrior? That you can vanquish any foe single-handedly? That you need no cohort supporting you? How perfectly presumptuous! Even I can admit my reliance upon others. <sighs> While you fight, who stands beside you to gauge the tide of battle? Who eliminates the archers aiming for you? Who heals whatever injuries you might sustain? These are questions you should be asking yourself, Emil. I ask them for you because we are old friends. Always quick to cut to the heart of the matter. Just as you are ever an ache in my side. Whatever. But there is a truth in your words. However, it is not up for discussion. Stop gossiping about me. I shall consider it. I must thank you, Emil. Why? You came to my aid in that recent skirmish. I loathe being in anyone's debt, so I brought you something as thanks. How it warms my heart to see you taking my advice about learning to work with others. I... do not recall. You don't recall working with others? Or you don't recall coming to my aid? My memories from battle are always a blur. The creature that you saw is me, and is not me. Hmm, that sounds perfectly meaningless. And yet, I may know exactly what you mean. That aside, this should serve to balance the scales between us. Here. This... It's the same variety of flower you would give to me, those many years ago. I found it at a florist in town. Though I suppose your memory of those days isn't as sharp as mine. I remember this. I gave you a rose when Count Nouvelle brought you along on his visit to House Bartels. I used to tend to the roses with Mercedes and Mother in the garden. So you do remember. The garden of House Bartels did tend to make an impression. Mother and Mercedes were always so blissful when they spent time there. You picked a rose and gave it to me, like the knights in the stories. Your story took a tragic turn. Time has had its way with you. I thought the same upon seeing you. <laughs> Your sympathy is noted. Of the two of us, only I could be said to have aged gracefully. That is not what I meant. We cannot go back in time. That was my meaning. Do not be so hasty. Anything lost can be regained. The garden may be gone now, but that will change once I have rebuilt House Nouvelle. You'll see when you walk into the grand rose garden I shall have planted in the center of the estate. You'll come and see it, won't you, Emil? You believe you are capable of that? With you assisting me, it is practically guaranteed. Is it now? Some will undoubtedly take forceful issue with the restoration. That's where you come in. What a privilege I am granting you to play a part in the return of my noble house. <laughs> <laughs> a smile.
smile spreading across your face? Now that is a rare blossom indeed. Only when in the company of a select few. Life is a series of peaks and valleys. Our reunion is, to my mind, the highest of peaks. Spoken like one who's never known the lowest of valleys. To think, we were once a pair of blooms, flourishing side by side in the upper echelons of Enbar society. Despite our differing aspirations, I think together we could have taken the mantle of leading the Empire. Tread carefully, Ferdinand. Some part of me clung to hope that you might emerge from the wreckage. I am glad you have. I know that was a difficult time for you. Oh, so you surmised that the single most humiliating event of my life was difficult, did you? It is becoming clear to me that this conversation is a waste of my time. Oh, that was rather brusque. Well, pardon me if I seem unmannerly in the face of a reminder of all I have lost. My family, my home, my friends, my people, everything. I am all that remains. I... I... I did not intend to offend you, Constance. Then what did you intend? How like the noblest of nobles to be unaware of the suffering one causes? You can't grasp what it is to be a newly minted peasant, can you? That is simply not true. I care about you. And I was attempting to offer some words of comfort. Enough! I need more than words, more than you have offered to provide. Though I am without status now, my spirit is no less noble. It will not do for you to condescend to me in my houseless state. You have my sincerest apologies. That was a grave misstep. I did not mean to come across as condescending. I was merely being careless with my words. As you say, I have never experienced loss at such a staggering magnitude. I cannot imagine the pain you have endured. Indeed, you cannot. I advise against trying. The more you harp on it, the more irritated with you I become. Never shall a day pass that I don't work toward restoring my house and reclaiming my title. You, on the other hand, seem content to remind me that it is lost. Thank you, but I had not forgotten. Constance, please. I see no trace of the boy who made waves with me at balls and embodied the finest in the nobility. This newfound arrogance of yours is a discredit to House Iyer. Hello, Constance. Greetings, Ferdinand. My condolences on your misfortune that our paths have crossed again. Oh dear, I am not used to hearing you deprecate yourself like that. Never mind, just listen. If it is an audience you require, I will endeavor to meet that need. When we last spoke, I was attempting to connect with you, to listen and show you some empathy. But I was so clumsy with my words that I came across as callous and conceited. I hurt you, I know. The notion that a noble of House Iyer could display arrogance is difficult to credit. That you even deign to speak to me is a testament to your humility. As grateful as I am for the honor, it would be best for us both if I take my leave. No, please, hear me out. Though your words chafed, I see now that they were perceptive. I was being arrogant. I tend to... overcompensate. Perhaps I make a fool of myself, bragging about my superiority to Edelgard. You do yourself a disservice. If you are a fool, then I am Folly herself. But you must know that it is no reflection on your sterling quality, Ferdinand. Even in the face of such adversity, you never strayed from the correct path. If this was the right path, the wrong path hardly bears thinking about. Still. Your kindness has eased my worries a bit. A wise noble once said that life is a series of peaks and valleys, but I have struggled to find the peaks. I was once pushed to the nadir of a valley, and have spent my days confined there ever since. 
There is little chance that I will ever return to the heights I once knew, but it will not be for lack of trying. Your persistence is admirable. You are too gracious. I see the highest of peaks on your own road. The way is steep, but not long. You will reach it yet. And if my words might reach the ears of a man who has attained such heights, perhaps one who has reached his summit might pull a climber up behind him? Such is my heart's desire, unspeakable though it may be. <laughs> you there! Ah, is there something I can do for you, Constance? Is there something you can do? Of course there is! Well, what is it? It ought to be plain. I do not follow. Please, clarify what you mean. Have you forgotten the day I revealed to you my silly little dream? If you weren't paying attention, I shall be cross. Oh, yes. You must be referring to the oblique request you made concerning peaks and valleys. Not seeing a peak ahead of you, you hoped I might help lift you out of your lowly st- Precisely! You've summed it up completely! Now that you know of what I speak, I want you to forget it immediately. Act as if you heard nothing. You want me to forget the occasion you just asked me to remember? I see. Before I discard this memory entirely, might I be so bold as to ask why? Is it not obvious? I don't want my weakness bandied about. I vowed to restore House Nouvelle through my own grand achievement. Just as I would not abandon this dream, I would not accept it being handed to me. Though if I am to be quite honest, the real reason is that letting you in on this vulnerability was an indiscretion I won't repeat. I see. What a curious situation. I don't take your meaning. Five years ago, with the cladding of my highborn status stripped away, I was vulnerable and exposed. To borrow your words, I was in a valley, and a thick shroud of fog obscured the peak before me. Now, the cloud has lifted a bit, and I can see a glimpse of what lies ahead. And what, dare I ask, do you see? There is a towering cliff for you to scale, and a long, rocky path lying ahead of me. Rather than ascending separately, we can join hands and face these obstacles together. Then, we can reach the heights of our forebears. Or, dare I say, even higher. Even higher, you say? Now you remind me once more of the boy I knew. I have but one concern. And what might that be? That I shall outpace your laggardly efforts. Huh? I was being sincere, you know. <laughs> oh, it's only you. Is there some reason you're here? Your gaze was rather piercing for someone who was just looking. Oh, I see now. You found yourself captivated by my charms. <laughs> This sort of thing happens all the time to those of us blessed with such transcendent beauty. If you say so, you seem a trifle stuck on the point if you ask me. Now then, you may call yourself my tutor if you wish, and I shall attend your classes. But none of this charade will make the idea of a mercenary teaching me any less absurd. <laughs> what was that look? Are you trying to convey that I'm a mere commoner, like yourself? Well, you are correct. Think of me as a temporarily embarrassed noble. Even a gilded wyvern must take refuge in its cave occasionally. But in time, it will soar free once more. I shall fly, bold and beautiful, into the skies again. My nobility and all of House Nouvelle shall be restored. The luck isn't a thing that you can bestow, or that I need. I will do this. When I restore the glory of my house, you may serve me in some menial way. 
I may even pay you. You would decline the honor of attending to me without a second thought? Hm. Say whatever you like, if it makes you feel better. It shall not sway me one way or the other. <laughs> you look as though you want to say something. Allow me to save you the effort. If you intend to tutor me, I will require you to first prove that time will not be wasted. Show me not just your talent for teaching, but your wisdom, your skill, your mettle, your sense of authority. <laughs> of course! I've been struck by my own genius. You may assist me in my research. That ought to provide a chance for you to grasp the extent of how magnificent I am. It will also afford me the time I need to scrutinize your character. It's a plan so perfect that you can't turn it down, huh? These herbs will do, though I note we're short on arcane crystals. I'll make a note to keep some in reserve next time. Yes, that's everything. All I need now is a test subject for the ritual. Not a what, a who, meaning you. Now, lie still, please. Fair point. A bit of rest to clear my head would be good for the next steps. Let us leave off here, and I shall see you again in the morning. I'd better make some headway on this tomorrow. Every day counts, you know. If I can complete this ritual, I'll be famous throughout the known world for it. Oh! The prestige it will bring me is necessary to restore my fallen house. Or was your question, why go to so much trouble for a fallen house? Because I am a Nouvelle, as were all my ancestors. And our line has endured too long to end with me. Oh, yes, you don't know. Well, seeing as you are serving both as my research assistant and test subject, I should explain myself. House Nouvelle was granted its peerage shortly after the establishment of the Empire. For generations, the heads of our house have been scholars of magic. They often enjoyed appointments to esteemed posts within the Empire. However, during the insurrection of the Seven, we cast our lot with the Emperor and were punished for it. We suffered further losses when we were used as a sacrifice to Dagda and Brigid during their attack. My family, including my parents and older brother, died then. The town of Nouvelle is now an ash heap. The six great families decreed this to be the end of my house. We have not left now but the name. No title? No subjects? No land? Everything I was to inherit has been taken from me. What I require is an achievement so grand that Lady Edelgard would be forced to recognize it. And then, House Nouvelle will take its rightful place among the elite class once more. You understand that to collaborate with me towards such a grand purpose is a high honor, don't you? <sighs> but yes, uh, good night. I expect to see you bright and early tomorrow. My calculations? I had precious few materials as things stood. Where will I get more once these run out? Oh, don't act so rueful. You carried out my directions faithfully. Neither the credit nor the blame ought to be yours. My grand achievement is further away than I had hoped. House Nouvelle's future seems so dim. You're correct, of course. I mustn't be discouraged. It is hard to maintain one's patience after five years. 
But in the greater context of the history of House Nouvelle, five years is barely worth counting. I have been in a low place indeed to require so much reassurance. And for your reassurance, I am truly grateful. You have spurred me to continue my research. You've been useful to me in many ways, in fact. Research assistant, confidant, test subject. All of this is preparing you well for your greater role to come. My personal attendant. There are few as naturally servile as you in all of Fodlan. When House Nouvelle is at long last restored, we simply must find the proper position for you. Granted, this will be difficult, perhaps even impossible to accept, given your current status. But I rarely let the impossible stop me. I shall see it all done. The restoration of my house, installing you as my servant, and more. Are you ready for the next steps? <laughs> How oh, come now? My sulk ended minutes ago. Do keep up. But on the rare occasion that I find myself at a loss, I grant you permission to lift my spirits. I don't know that I care for the hint of resignation in your tone, but no matter. I expect you to do your all for the sake of my house nonetheless. <laughs> You're late! Did you intend to keep me waiting for so long? Yes, I suppose your position is rather demanding. But you really must get your priorities in order. The moment has come. All these years of research shall finally bear fruit! <laughs> <clears throat> but first, a request. You must marry me! I've given this quite a bit of thought. It satisfies me to have come up with a way to be with you always. For the ruler of the new unified Fodlin to become my personal attendant might seem a step down. However, if we were to be wed, you would have to stay close to me. A perfect plan, wouldn't you agree? No, not at all. You misunderstand me. I want a real marriage, not a political sham. I want us to be together for life. My love for you won't stand for anything less. Oh! You came prepared with a ring! Which means we think alike already. We were destined to be together. And it is together that we shall work to restore House Nouvelle. You have no issue with living on House Nouvelle's former land, I trust? Or would it pose difficulties for one in your position to move to the western edge of Fodlin? Ah, uh, but that is a detail which can be settled later. Let us act now on what matters. intrusion, but something alarming has happened. It seems to have started around the Goddess Tower, but it's spread throughout the cathedral now. A wave of flowers is... Oh, uh, please excuse me. I can see you're busy. Ah, I should have realized... Her magic? Your fiancé? Since when were you engaged? His fiancé? Well, congratulations in that case. If that's all this is, then I'll let the others know to stand down. My dearest, you must warn me next time before tossing around such charged language. <laughs> what you called me? Oh, I'm all a flutter. I can't tell whether this is delight or embarrassment. Regardless, I shall consider it to be fair play. I haven't felt my spirits lifted so since the last time I made a breakthrough in my research. Hmm? Oh, do 
you suppose that piece of spellcraft will suffice to see my house restored? It surely qualifies as a grand achievement, yes? One that shall go down in history. As for what other purpose it might serve, I leave that up to you. You won't object to that, I take it. After all, you can't refuse a request from your darling fiancé. <laughs> Oh, Constance! Hey, um... Sure is sunny out. Huh? Yeah. Good day to you, Balthus. You seem to be enjoying your freedom. I must admit, I'm jealous. Right, uh... So yeah, the weather's nice. <laughs> I gotta be going now. Of course. What profit is there for one so exalted to spend time alongside one so common as me? Worry not. You needn't suffer me any longer. I shall see myself off. Come on, don't be like that. You know I get uncomfortable at times like this. I'm trying. Really. You matter, so stick around, yeah? Let's chat. It'll be great. You needn't take pity on me out of the sense of obligation that your status demands. For you, the nobility that you abandoned was a shackle on your true self, which is now freed. No need to converse with me any longer, putting yourself out on my behalf. Quite a mouthful you just unloaded on me. Not sure what you mean by that nobility stuff, though. Sure, I walked out on leading a noble house, but how do you imagine that's related to this chat of ours? I already admitted I'm no good with stuff like this, but I don't think I'm putting myself out or whatever. My apologies. The misunderstanding was entirely my own. As I suspected from the start, I am unfit to serve as your conversational partner. Ah, that's enough! Stop talking that way and twisting everything I say! Just spit it out and tell me something real. You hate my guts, yeah? Huh, this is novel. But doesn't this scene usually play out in reverse? Oh, uh, sorry. Guess I raised my voice there. But what do you mean by that reverse ding? Well, it's usually her yelling at you while you try to deflect. It's rare to see you lose your cool while she stays so calm. But different people get along differently on different days, I suppose. Anyhow, I'll let you get back to it. Ouch, he has a point. I lost myself for a moment there. To think that I have ever raised my voice at you. He seems to think we're real pals. Honestly, whether rain or shine, I don't think a day's gone by without you treating me poorly. Oh, what a thing to say. I could never go so far as to insult one with your lineage. Ha, <laughs> you're a funny one, pal. A real hoot. The idea that I could be amusing is funnier than any jest I may have uttered. <laughs> What's with all the ruckus, I wonder? Wait, isn't that Constance? This has nothing to do with you, so keep your nose out of it. Yeah, none of your business. Unless you're his girlfriend, that is. <laughs> you ascribe too much to me, sirs. I haven't the qualities that Balthus seeks in a partner. So prissy. You Balthus's lady or not? Softly, please, softly. Such accusations are slander upon his good name. I have no place in the heart of one so freewheeling and glad. Were there a list of suitable partners, I should deem myself to be at the tail end of it. If you're not his gal, then step off. We're trying to spread some juicy Balthus gossip over here. You're nothing to him, so why ruin our fun? Because what you say is unthinkable. If you attempt to spread lies that strain credulity so, it will be your own reputations that suffer. Your reputations or your bones, should Balthus ever learn of this deception. A hairline break may heal, but the powder he makes of a man's skeleton is another matter. And that's to say nothing of the jelly that will be left of your organs. Are you not concerned? He'll do what? Oh, um, guess spreading lies is a bad idea. Good thing I'd never do such a thing. Uh, right. 
This is all a big misunderstanding. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up. We're just gonna back away now. Um, have a nice day. <sighs> I've saved lives today. They didn't deserve the fury that he would unleash. But then, few would. Hmm? Is that not Balthus standing there? Hey, why'd you say all that scary stuff about me? Don't tell people things like that. They're not the ones ruining my reputation. You are. Oh, how short-sighted of me. I believed myself to be acting in your interest, but I see now that I was mistaken. I shall regret this indiscretion until my dying day. <sighs> Clearly, I need to take anything that falls out of your mouth with a grain of salt. Maybe the whole shaker. Still, you did stop those two from talking about me. Regardless of how you did it, I guess I should be grateful, so... thanks. This magnanimity is in keeping with the wondrous man I know you to be. So open. So accepting. You are a paragon for others to follow. Sheesh. Maybe it's better when she treats me poorly. Being praised like that is downright uncomfortable. Balthus, you mustn't draw the enemy in, so pray do not sacrifice yourself on my account. Enough of that. Just watch my back like we planned. A thousand pardons, then. Whew, it's been a while since we had such a close fight. How are you holding up? You didn't seem like your heart was really in it this time. I had some difficulty. Knowing the torment our enemy was going through. Bad enough to fall in combat, but to be felled by one so base as I. Oh, if they regret anything, it's that you're worried about their humiliating defeat. Ego burn right there. You know, it wasn't so bad fighting at your side. They make a pretty good team, you and I. It is because you have the courage to face your enemies head on, leaving your flanks unguarded and the generosity to allow less skilled fighters the glory of dispatching foes who take the bait. Every aspect of your tactics is a reflection of your incomparable virtue. You have a way of understanding a situation, but also twisting it all up in your head. Impressive, really. The unrivaled king of grappling himself, that'd be me, trusted you enough to watch his back. Can't you just be proud and leave it at that? The nickname is a difficult one to respect, though the man inhabiting it is more than worthy. Hmm. If what I have said today has offended, which I would not doubt, then accept my humblest apologies. <laughs> you really are something else, you know that? I like your style, pal. I could see us teaming up as mercenaries and wandering from battlefield to battlefield. Admit it. That would be a grand old time, don't you think? It would depend on the circumstances. Might I impose on you to come with me? Right, there's always... Wait, what? Okay, we're here. Care to explain? Must you make a mockery of everything? I have my own dream to pursue, not this twaddle! You assume I'd abandon the restoration of House Nouvelle to... to become a vagrant? Are you mad? Even among your fabled transgressions, this goes beyond the pale. Definitely a fair-weather friend, that one. Hey, Loco, how are you? Happy? What in the world has gotten into you? Happy, it would be easier to understand you if your mouth was less stuffed. Kindly finish what you are eating and then say your piece. My pleasure. Nothing better than fresh pastries. You sure you don't want one, Coco? It's not about whether I want a bun or not. It's about your atrocious manners. Walking around with your arms and jaws stuffed full of unwrapped pastries? 
There are crumbs all over your lips, your clothes. You've left a trail of them behind you. Unacceptable. Hey, I paid for them. I can eat them however I want. Sure you don't want a bite? If you don't have any, I'm just gonna eat them all. You have to try them fresh out of the oven if you want the full effect. Pretty soon they'll get cold. Oh, I'll explain in noble speak so you understand. <clears throat> they have a crisp, oven-browned exterior and a sophisticated, spongy sweetness lying within. Uh, not... Not interested? That's fine. More for me. I was going to say, not so fast. Spare one for me, but only because you insisted. It would be rude of me to decline an offering made in good faith. One must mind one's manners. You're really dragging this out. Here, I'll make it easy for you. Open up. Wait, don't you... Not bad, right? I could not, in good conscience, acknowledge this as anything but delicious. Now you have crumbs all over you, too. Your form could use a little work. Next time, stuff the whole thing in your mouth at once. That's the proper way to eat a snack like this. If you ate this at some stuffy party, cutting it into sensible little bites, the experience would be ruined. I see your point. There are more types of dining in this world than I was ready to allow for. You've won me over. Let's eat them while we head to the cathedral and litter the ground with crumbs. A capital idea! Wait, no! Not the cathedral! You've lost me again, Happy! Oh, thank you for going to such lengths to come see me, Happy. I live here, so it's not like I had to travel a long way. Do you need me for something, Coco? Need might be an exaggeration. Good, because I was just headed to bed. It's nearly sunset. Have a good night. Wait, no. Just because I don't need you for anything doesn't mean you may go. Need isn't quite it precisely. Hmm. How to broach the subject nicely. Nice rhyme. Are you dabbling in poetry now? <sighs> don't be daft. Anyway, I need you for something. You could have just said that from the start. So you want me to drink whatever this is? It's how I intend to show my gratitude for all the things you do for me. Right, right, everything I do for you, such as... What exactly? Oh, you know, the pastries, the dried meats, sharing your fruits. Oh, like when we ate those currants and you got juice all over your face. Must you bring that up every time? It took me hours to get the stains out of my favorite fan. I thought it was funny. So, what's this drink you gave me? It smells good, but it looks weird. <laughs> it's all the rage amongst the elite now. They call it coffee. It's derived from rare Dagden beans, which are roasted, ground, and then boiled over water. That's a lot of effort to make hot bean water. Nobles find such inventive ways to waste time. Hold your criticism until you've tasted it. And taste it quickly, please. This is a beverage that one must drink hot. All right, I guess. Well, your verdict? Whoa. This is not what I expected. It kind of tastes like mud, but also it's delicious and I never want to stop drinking it. Exactly my reaction! The flavor is so striking that one trembles for more! All gone. Got more? <laughs> Indeed, I do not. The coffee bean, as I mentioned, is rare and thus expensive. They are not easy to procure. Though, if I could restore House Nouvelle to its former glory, I might have means to acquire more. On second thought, never mind. You don't have to go to all that trouble. Oh, but I was going to restore my house anyway. It just may be some time until my finances improve. How about we go to the woods and find some fruit trees like we did the other day? Fresh fruit might not be as fancy as coffee, but it's good enough for me. Come on. If that's all you desire, I think I can indulge you. To the orchards! <laughs> Delicious, is it not? 
There is little that can rival the taste of a freshly caught fish grilled to perfection over an open flame. I prefer mine with a pinch of salt. <laughs> Look at you, eating regular food like the rest of us regular folk. It's only temporary. A fish from the river is a coin saved at the marketplace. My project will require every bit of gold I can spare. Plus, there's a war going on. We've all got to save money however we can. Constance, what is that shabby meal you're eating with such lowly company? I suppose after all that's happened, she's given up on regaining her noble title. Probably for the best. How dare you! Would you two mind your own business? We're just trying to eat in peace. Did you hear that? It sounds like a stray cat is screeching at us. Oh dear, she's not using any silverware to speak of. She's just eating with her paws. I'd expect that from a commoner. But Constance seems to be doing the same thing. How humiliating. <laughs> oh, we're so vicious. Beating up on poor, pathetic Constance after all of her setbacks. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Pardon my outburst, but I couldn't help myself after your ridiculous conversation. How I eat my fish has nothing to do with my status. In fact, I shall vow one thing now. When House Nouvelle is restored, I shall bite into a whole fish thrice weekly. Pardon? Moreover, Happy is a dear friend. I won't permit you to call her a stray cat or anything so insulting. We shall continue to remain steadfast friends even after my title is restored. And how soon do you expect that to happen? We both know that if she carries on with such disgraceful behavior, she won't restore her house anytime soon. Well, for the upper class, those two seemed rather classless. Um, what just happened? Oh, I knew them of old. They were callow noblewomen from the school of sorcery. No, I mean, you said that I'm a dear friend. Did you really mean that? Oh, one says all sorts of things when one feels like being cruel. But yes, I really meant that. Even when I am a noble once more, I expect you to keep me company well into my dotage. Of course, Coco. Won't be easy getting rid of me. Yuri! Halt! How dare you make me run all over the monastery! Calm down. It was all on you, Shady Lady. Shady? Uh, you know full well I'm sensitive about that. It's as though you wish to be incinerated. <clears throat> what I mean to say is, all shall be forgiven when you do my bidding. Uh... I know, I know. It's an honor I don't extend to many. You have the rare opportunity to aid me in realizing my dream. I shall rebuild House Nouvelle. Nobility will be mine again, and the glory of my esteemed family will once more reign supreme. Blah, blah, blah. Restore House Nouvelle. Blah, blah, blah. Will you just stop? You're making my ears hurt. I am but an insignificant and beautiful creature. Surely there's nothing I have to offer for your plight. Your facade does not fool me. I know you for what you truly are. With the nobility's backing, Western Fodland's underworld is yours. Everyone has heard whispers of the savage Mockingbird. That is you they refer to, yes? <laughs> <sighs> Your time would be better spent laying the groundwork for me to reclaim my title. I envision you using your connections to apply pressure on the nobles in Enbar. Right. So say I indulge you, that I agree on this killer bird you speak of. What I offer comes at a high price. You do understand that, right, lady? How exactly do you intend to compensate me? But what greater compensation could I offer than to play a part in restoring House Nouvelle? Restoration of houses does nothing to put food in my stomach. I suppose. But rest assured that upon my return to power, you shall be suitably rewarded. 
Let me cut through the mud here. You're broke, and you'll pay me after you get what you want. Wow. I love how irresponsible you are. <laughs> Refreshing. Then what would you have me do? I have nothing to bargain with now. No status, no wealth. Perhaps rather than turning to a killer bird for help, you should be bound before the nobles or some such. Get down on all fours and lick their boots. See what that'll get you. <laughs> Perhaps you're too prim and proper for that. Lick their boots? Is tonguing their footwear likely to sway them to my cause? My work here is done. No, I was not through with you yet. You, you come back here! Hey! Hey, shady lady. I see you're working into the wee hours. I have asked you before not to refer to me that way. Right, right, whatever, sorry. Uh, anyway, what kind of bizarre spells are you weaving? <laughs> An excellent question. It's a brand of spellcraft many have dreamed of, but none have achieved. A revolution in magical theory. Revolutionary spell work, huh? Steal yourself for this. The working transforms leather boots into licorice! The old serviceable shape with a new, sweeter taste. <laughs> Uh, huh. That's certainly... something. I'm sure you'll ravage the economy with this one. So, um... Why boots, precisely? I was inspired by your suggestion that licking the nobility's boots would fulfill my dream. I went to my chambers to discreetly taste my own boots. They were less appetizing than I had hoped. The thought of licking boots day in and day out was revolting, but then I thought, what if? Tonguing licorice boots rather than leather ones would make the whole ordeal much more palatable. <laughs> this is no run-of-the-mill penny-ante black magic. This is something new. Black licorice magic. I could lick the boots of a hundred nobles if they all tasted so scrumptious as licorice. Are you some kind of damn fool? <laughs> the common mind often has difficulty distinguishing between genius and idiocy. You set me the challenge of licking boots, and I would say that I have risen to it ably. Correct. I told you to do that. But I think you took what I said just a bit too literally. Then how did you mean it? Does the licking not count if the liquor enjoys it? It's mostly something you do by way of acting subservient. I'd even lick the mud from your boots, my lord. Get it? What? Are their nobles so depraved that they would take satisfaction in such a thing? There sure are. I've licked a boot or three in my day. Indeed? Oh, did it not turn your stomach? Well, of course it did. There's hardly any dignity in boot licking. Talking to you is truly entertaining. You're a special kind of strange. I've known many a noble in my life, but none like you. I was just dealing with a bunch of them, so the difference seems especially stark. Though, I guess you're not technically a noble at this point, are you? You were dealing with nobles in the dead of night? Wait, what? D did you just call me strange? Oof, I'm exhausted. Better go hit the sack. Don't work too hard, milady. I did not give you leave to go! Ugh, his rudeness knows no bounds. But I'll have my revenge. Perhaps by exposing his business with these nobles. He'll rue the day he loosened his tongue in front of me. <laughs> Remember when you mentioned briefly that you'd been in conference with some nobles? Did the topic of conversation happen to be me? I haven't the foggiest idea what you're talking about. Don't be coy with me. I recently received an offer of support from Count Karen. Bravo. Your dream of restoring your house is that much closer now, isn't it? We shall see. My response is on hold until I could confirm something first. Hmm? <laughs> you sound as befuddled as I feel. These are events you set in motion, are they not? I want only the truth from you. Lie to me and you shall be incinerated. That doesn't leave me much wiggle room, does it? 
All right, I'll tell you. So yeah, I might have been negotiating with some nobles. Maybe. Possibly. You do recall that I have nothing I can offer you in return, yes? <laughs> of course I know that. I just did what I needed to get what I wanted. Like always. Explain. All my life, I've known how to angle to get everything I've ever wanted. Money, social standing, the whole kid and caboodle. See? That's how the savage mockingbird lives. Ever since I was a kid, it's how I've done things. What does that have to do with... Wait, are you admitting to being the savage mockingbird? Then I find myself wanting in on this house of yours. The one you've yet to rebuild. What? No, no, wait. You haven't yet answered my question about the savage... Preen, as this bird might be, his only home is a dark, wet back alley. As long as I'm me, nothing can change that. So, I figured, if I could leave that home of mine and live simply as Yuri, even if only for a while, you know, I might like somewhere proper to return to. Somewhere cozy, comfy even. Better than House Row, or the last I learned from. I'm not sure what you're insinuating here. I'll get your house back for you. And I only ask for one thing as payment. Once House Nouvelle is back in good standing, I want a home there. You mean, you wish to join House Nouvelle? But the only way to do that... Marriage. Bingo. Quick, easy, simple. You and I. Spouses. You heard me. It's a fine enough trade. What's the problem? I mentioned nothing about a problem. Where did you get that notion? I've always found you very useful, though I could do with less, much less, of your back talk. I suppose Milady doesn't want a rogue for a husband. <laughs> Can't handle all that is Yuri, hmm? No, no, but there is a procedure to this sort of thing. How can you join my house when I have none? What? You want to do things in order? How boring. I suppose we'll be lovers for now. Uh, you mock me! You mock me and I will not have it! Me? Mock? I'm being sincere. I'd never live out another dull day with you by my side. That is my only fear. A life spent by your side may be more taxing than I could stand. Seeing you so flustered provides endless entertainment. <laughs> Is there some reason you're here? The intensity of your gaze puts the lie to that excuse. Oh, I see now. You found yourself captivated by my charms. <laughs> this sort of thing happens all the time to those of us blessed with such transcendent beauty. If you say so, you seem a trifle stuck on the point if you ask me. Now then, you may call yourself my tutor if you wish, and I shall attend your classes. But none of this charade will make the idea of a mercenary teaching me any less absurd. <laughs> what was that look? Are you trying to convey that I'm a mere commoner like yourself? Well, you are correct. Think of me as a temporarily embarrassed noble. Even a gilded wyvern must take refuge in its cave occasionally. But in time, it will soar free once more. I shall fly, bold and beautiful, into the skies again. My nobility and all of House Nouvelle shall be restored. <gasps> what insolence! You hadn't even heard what I was going to say next. When I restore the glory of my house, you may serve me in some menial way. I may even pay you. <laughs> Is that the most you can say when offered such a tantalizing prize? <laughs> say whatever you like, if it makes you feel better. It shall not sway me one way or the other. <laughs> You look as though you want to say something. Allow me to save you the effort. If you intend to tutor me, I will require you to first prove that time will not be wasted. Show me not just your talent for teaching, but your wisdom, your skill, your mettle, your sense of authority. 
<laughs> of course! I've been struck by my own genius. You may assist me in my research. That ought to provide a chance for you to grasp the extent of how magnificent I am. It will also afford me the time I need to scrutinize your character. It's a plan so perfect that you can't turn it down, huh? These herbs will do, though I note we're short on arcane crystals. I'll make a note to keep some in reserve next time. No more materials, if that's what you're asking, though I do still require a test subject. Not a what, a who, meaning you. Now, lie still, please. Point. A bit of rest to clear my head would be good for the next steps. Let us leave off here, and I shall see you again in the morning. I'd better make some headway on this tomorrow. Every day counts, you know. If I can complete this ritual, I'll be famous throughout the known world for it. Oh! The prestige it will bring me is necessary to restore my fallen house. Or was your question, why go to so much trouble for a fallen house? Because I am a Nouvelle, as were all my ancestors. And our line has endured too long to end with me. Oh, yes, you don't know. Well, seeing as you are serving both as my research assistant and test subject, I should explain myself. House Nouvelle was granted its peerage shortly after the establishment of the Empire. For generations, the heads of our house have been scholars of magic. They often enjoyed appointments to esteemed posts within the Empire. However, during the insurrection of the Seven, we cast our lot with the Emperor and were punished for it. We suffered further losses when we were used as a sacrifice to Dagda and Brigid during their attack. My family, including my parents and older brother, died then. The town of Nouvelle is now an ash heap. The six great families decreed this to be the end of my house. We have not left now but the name. No title? No subjects? No land? Everything I was to inherit has been taken from me. What I require is an achievement so grand that Lady Edelgard would be forced to recognize it. And then, House Nouvelle will take its rightful place among the elite class once more. You understand that to collaborate with me towards such a grand purpose is a high honor, don't you? <sighs> but yes, uh, good night. I expect to see you bright and early tomorrow. My calculations? I had precious few materials as things stood. Where will I get more once these run out? Oh, don't act so rueful. You carried out my directions faithfully. Neither the credit nor the blame ought to be yours. My grand achievement is further away than I had hoped. House Nouvelle's future seems so dim. You're correct, of course. I mustn't be discouraged. It is hard to maintain one's patience after five years. But in the greater context of the history of House Nouvelle, five years is barely worth counting. I have been in a low place indeed to require so much reassurance. And for your reassurance, I am truly grateful. You have spurred me to continue my research. You've been useful to me in many ways, in fact. Research assistant, confidant, test subject. All of this is preparing you well for your greater role to come. 
my personal attendant. There are few as naturally servile as you in all of Fodlan. When House Nouvelle is at long last restored, we simply must find the proper position for you. Granted, this will be difficult, perhaps even impossible to accept, given your current status. But I rarely let the impossible stop me. I shall see it all done. The restoration of my house, installing you as my servant, and more. Are you ready for the next steps? <laughs> Oh, come now, my sulk ended minutes ago. Do keep up. But on the rare occasion that I find myself at a loss, I grant you permission to lift my spirits. I don't know that I care for the hint of resignation in your tone, but no matter. I expect you to do your all for the sake of my house nonetheless. <laughs>